Hi everyone, welcome to Terry TV. How are you today? It's December. I'm hearing funny little bleeps. So let me de bleeperize it. <laughs> I'm Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, pop icon, and internationally trademarked artist and speaker. If you have a school with kids that would like to know what it's like uh, to be an Imagineer, or what it's like to be an artist, reach out to me because I'm happy to speak to your school or organization. I never mind that. I love to do that. Um, this is a very busy time of year for me because many young people will ask to interview me for their projects. And I'm so honored and always want to say yes. I have trouble saying no to, uh, to our youth because they are our future. Anyway, welcome to Terry TV. I hope you're having a great time. I'm celebrating by wearing my Christmas sweater. That's Disney eyes. And uh, wanting to talk to you today about a couple of things that uh, I think are very important. First of all, uh, if you're going to be in Disneyland, and I cannot speak for Walt Disney World, maybe one of you can tell me if Walt Disney World is does their uh, candlelight. And I think they do. There's a couple of times during the December season. But at Disneyland, this is the only time, Saturday and Sunday, the, uh, what is that, the second and the third, yeah? Second and the third is the candlelight. And all are welcome, all are welcome if you can get a reservation. <laughs> and those of you who aren't too familiar with the candlelight event at Disneyland, what many, many people do is go there at what we call rope drop. Now, rope drop is early, early in the morning. Many people will gather at around seven o'clock and then Disney will let you in at around eight rope drop or, or seven thirty, And then rope drop is around eight o'clock. But what most do is get in there and there's benches, you know, all of those benches, that are um, that are near where candlelight works. So, candlelight, the choir sings on the steps of our railroad station, and they come from schools. They come from all over, and Disney has their own choir, of which many of us have friends that are there singing. It is really a great time to get together and see people you haven't seen for quite some time. A truly beautiful, festive occasion. And people come from all over the United States to enjoy candlelight at Disneyland. So it's a very, very lovely time of year. Uh, this year, as you know, has been a little challenging for Terry at Terry TV. So I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I did go last night to a special gathering and party of many of these people. Uh, I have a couple friends that tend to do this party every year and people come from all over to be at this party. And it's usually at Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. And this was no different. Last year, we couldn't have it there because they were remodeling. And this year they were open and we were so excited to go back. So I got to see all my friends who have come in for candlelight and they wanted to know if I was going to see them on Sunday because they're all going to be coveting their, they're going to be grabbing their benches, putting their, you know, their blankets and sitting there. And it's a big party, guys. I don't know if you've ever been around candlelight, but you can walk down, you know, walk around the square and then go up Main Street and you're running into people, you know, I think it feels like a procession for me. It's step together, step, step together, step. It'll take me easily an hour or so just to get from the courtyard and the train station to rope drop area at the end of Main Street. So I love it because it's it's the one time I get to see a lot of you that I don't get to see for most of the year. So Candlelight is a very wonderful place to be, but reservations, of course, will be your challenge. Now, for me, what's going to happen is I have not yet made a reservation. So I may have to do it between the goalposts of rope drop where you're all grabbing your seats and staying for the day until candlelight at night. And then I will either stay a little bit for candlelight or I'll just take off and go home. But I'm really going to go to visit you guys because it's the people that make the place in my opinion. Right. So, uh, so candlelight is a very festive time, beautiful music, 
um, beautiful. And a lot of them are your friends or your family, your school might be going. It is really, really a lovely time. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it because you're going to run into people that you haven't seen in a long time. And it really is very special. It's a very, very special time. It's more than a show. And uh, although many of you may have heard about the show, uh, lots and lots of singers, a beautiful soloist, a lovely uh, orchestra, and no rain this year. We usually have a lot of, sometimes we'll rain. If California rains one time, it's going to happen during candlelight. And so uh, this year we rain a lot. And for some reason they look down, but it will be cold. So you want to be sure if you're going to go and listen. And a lot of people like to be as close to the front as possible. And there are special seats arranged for the VIPs, of course. You know, Disneyland always has VIPs. Disney always has VIPs. So those that are fortunate enough to sit in those chairs, I've been one of those people on several occasions, Imagineer stuff, but uh, uh, people around it too. And you just walk around and you say hi to people and you, you're you in the lines and you you walk along the lines and it's just joyful. You know, it's just a really, really, really wonderful time. And like I said, Last night I went to the party because I wasn't sure I was going to make it over the weekend. And uh, the party was at the jazz kitchen, so I didn't need a reservation. Well, I needed a reservation, but I need didn't need to get on. And uh, I was very happy because I was able to park in the structure. Um, I thread the needle. Uh, I live in Southern California, and there's a time to go to Disneyland. If you live in a certain point of Southern California and it's not right next door to the park, you have to plan if you don't like traffic. That would be me. I like easy, so I go early. And then I love to go to the Grand Californian uh, if I'm going to this party. And I've gone to this party. Gosh, I think they've had this party for 10 years or something like that. Oh, easily more because it's the 60. We're almost to the the 70th anniversary of the birthday, right? So we started this party before the 50th anniversary. Wow. You guys just helped me with that. Whoa. Anyway, I've been going to this party over and over and over and over and over again. And it's always been beautiful. I think the first time we had the party, maybe it was like 10 people and it's grown to over 50. So it's just fabulous. It's a fabulous party. Unfortunately, the Jazz Kitchen has done a remodel and all of that New Orleans charm that they had, it's gone. Oh, Lordy, it's just completely erased. And it's so, so sad. From that beautiful sparkly piano they used to have downstairs to the right and those wonderful jazz singers that they used to have, gone, gone. It now to me looks like a cafeteria. It, it just looks like a cafeteria. Now, they haven't changed the prices, but the look of it is very cafeteria. The, the chairs are different. The tables just, mm, I didn't think it was good at all. Those beautiful New Orleans stairs that they had that took you to the second level are now cement. Easier to maintain, but not really attractive. The room in which we got together used to have a lovely carpet and curtains, so it was very well insulated and you could hear each other speak. That's really important when you put 40 or 50 people in a room, isn't it? But instead, hard floor, hard ceiling, no curtains, hard walls, so it was a cacophony of noise. And we couldn't hear each other even if we were sitting next to them at our table. So Let's look at that on the positive end. You had to get up and lean into your friend, make sure you could hear them, right? When you talked, you had to make sure. Yeah, because, oh, anyone with a soft voice, good luck, because you couldn't hear them. So it was a challenging experience. Many of us went out onto the balcony at the jazz kitchen and had a conversation if it was an important one. How are you doing? What's happening? How have you been? I haven't seen you in two years. Oh, it's so exciting. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So when you go to the jazz kitchen, uh, the food is different. They used to do that glorious bananas foster, you know, where they pulled it up to your table and lit the pan. Gone. It's now a bananas foster beignet which I think is so sweet. It's awful. I mean, you know, they're sweet and then there's, oh, yuck. So it was not very good. And I really missed the floor. So all the showmanship is gone. They do have some jazz players that play 
the the um, the uh, clarinet and the trumpet and various instruments, and they kind of rove like a little jazz, you know, do, 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 do. but they're a little hard to hear because it's reverberating everywhere. So the best way to hear these people play these instruments and get that little bit of jazz feeling is to hang out on the upper floor balcony while they're downstairs playing because the music rises up. So, uh, and lots of light, not really a lot of ambiance anymore. Very sad, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know if it'll be someplace I continue to go unless I've got friends, you know, and, uh, we can share a meal there, but there's other places that share a nice meal, isn't there? So some of the renovations of downtown Disney leave me a little cold. I will say though, that Lego store is jumping because I saw a lot of yellow and red Lego bags. And I thought, wow, I wonder what's happening at the Lego store. There was definitely a party yesterday because it was like the Lego bag uh, dr drill team. You know, people coming at you and all of them had those bright yellow and red bags, you know, with stuff inside. I said, ooh, maybe we should go check that out. I didn't have time to do it, but maybe I should have. Anyway, tons of fun. Super exciting. Uh, great time was had by all because of the people. And we really, really, really enjoyed it. It was just so much fun. But I, I think the Jazz Kitchen robbed itself of all its beauty, of all its charm, and of everything that we love to, we've come to love about the Jazz Kitchen. So uh, if you haven't been there and you want to check it out, um, the budget hasn't changed, but the rest has. <laughs> But what I usually do when I go to these parties, the parties are usually and have every year been around 6, 630. Join each other six o'clock for cocktails and, and talking and then you order by seven. And uh, uh, what I do because I live in um, the San Fernando Valley area sort of thing, I live, you know, more, what would that be? Um, West, I guess, or... Uh, yeah, I think we're more West. It takes about 40 minutes to get to Disneyland on a good day. From Hollywood, let's say Hollywood, from Hollywood to Disneyland. If coming from the Hollywood area, uh, there's a time you got to go and you, you look for travel times. And that usually means I leave about one o'clock. And so yesterday I pop, we, we got in the car a little late getting started, 1.30, but we still did well. We ended up being at the parking structure at around 3, which was perfect, and um, jumped on the tram immediately, went through security, went through security, parked quickly, easily, close, got through security quickly, easily, jumped on a tram, no problem, got over to downtown Disney, super simple, went into the Grand Californian, easy peasy, about 3.30, the little bar in the back near the beautiful five-foot gingerbread house, which if you haven't seen it, you got to go see it. It's gorgeous. Also, lots of little yummy things in the Grand Californian and also singers in the Grand Californian. And all you have to do is go there and sit. You don't even have to be in the hotel. It's what the Californian does for you to celebrate the holidays. Their gift to you. And then on the side, they have cake pops, cookies, yummy little things that you might want to grab for stocking stuffers or for yourself. Wonderful. But that little bar in back, it opens at four. And they have the best food. Their food is so wonderful. And you can get yourself a cuddly drink. So usually what I do is I will have a drink at the period between three and six when I'm at that location and invite people to come say hello. And then we'll go over to the main event, the party, and we won't drink because we have to drive about an hour to get home. So it's not right to be under the influence. Of course not. So by then we've had food, everything, everything's good. We're alert, we're awake, and we get home when we need to safely. So that's our little plan. And it's a quiet, comfy, warm, kind of, I wouldn't say speakeasy feel, 
but it's just wonderful. The servers are lovely. The food is amazing. I highly recommend the Parmesan encrusted. That's right. Parmesan encrusted grilled cheese sandwich, which if you're a light eater, share it with your, your significant other. I shared it with my husband because I love their truffle fries. If you haven't tried their truffle fr fries, truffle fries, try to say that quickly. Um, they're an addiction there at that little place in the Grand Californian. They're an addiction. Good luck trying not to eat them all. Like <laughs> wonderful. And then we have a nice comfy, cozy Bailey's and coffee, the two of us. And uh, it's just lovely. It's just lovely. And then if we see anybody we know, they come over, they say hello, they sit and chat with us, and then they go off to uh, Disneyland if they're going to go to Disneyland, Lego if they're going to Lego. Um, to eat if they're going to eat, but it's really, it's really lovely. And we do that every year. And the reason we don't sit in the main area is because there are singers and there are people visiting and there is entertainment. And we just want to have just a quiet, you know, my year is quite chaotic and our lives can be. So it's really nice to go into that bar and just, just like defrag. It is a great place. It's an awesome place. And I highly recommend it. You should go and enjoy it. The people are wonderful and fabulous. Um, you can hear each other talk because <laughs> it's insulated. It's really nice. And we've loved it every single year. So we always invite our friends to come and join us. But they can sometimes and sometimes they cannot. So it's really, really special. Uh, so I hope you'll join us. It's really cool. And then check out the Jazz Kitchen for yourself. But I think they've made a serious mistake. I think they've actually made it so you're not going to want to go there as much as before. Because that used to be my high-end relaxing spot. And now I don't know that I'll go there on my own anymore. If I don't have that beautiful party to go to, I don't really see any reason to go there. And that's a shame because I used to love to go there you know, and listen to some jazz and ha um, yeah, it's, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't think it's, I don't think they did a good job really, but you, you go and look at it. Or if you've been, let me know, let me know in the comments what you think. Cause I'd love to hear what you think. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Ooh. So as always, before we get started and I look at your comments, I want to tell you about Terry's tribe. Patreon.com slash Terry Arden. That's my Patreon page. And I hesitate to say my Patreon page because, yes, it's under Terry Harden, so you can find it or just Google me, go to Patreon, put me in the search. But if you, you put this in your search, you'll find you'll go directly to my page. It's only five dollars a month to be a part of it. And it's a community of wonderful people. Oh, they're just so wonderful. So that's why I like to say it's our Patreon page. So if you're looking at the world and feeling a little melancholy because you think it's going, you know, it's not, it's, it's full of things that aren't savory and maybe they're missing out on the holiday spirit and you'd like some holiday spirit or whatever, come join us, come give us your voice. It's a really, really good time of year for us. Uh, many of the people in the tribe are asking me, uh, last year, we we picked a storybook that we loved either as a child or in our lives, and we read it to each other. So we spent an evening during that time between Christmas and New Year's where we all got on Zoom and read to each other. So uh, it's really lovely, and it's only $5 a month. That's because I need you to have skin in the game if I'm going to have skin in the game. It's only fair. And so... Hold on a second. I'm also keeping an eye on my mom. So I need to talk to you about that too. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, I won't be broadcasting on Monday, but I'm going to try and do a little pre-recorded thing for you guys. Okay. Uh, my mother is in uh, some of you who know me really well. She's in a convalescent hospital and I have to make sure that I sit with her because she's, because she's, her face is swollen from a tooth that is hurting her and it has to be pulled. So I don't want her to be alone. 
And uh, so I'm going to be there with her. And the dentist has informed me they're going to be at the location. And I won't get into all of the stuff. But the dentist is coming to the, the convalescent hospital to pull her to. So I'm going to be there with her when the dentist does that. And to make sure the dentist is sweet and loving and kind. Not that the dentist will be mean. But I just want to be there so my mom can do it as comfortably as possible. And that's from 9 to 10. So it kind of takes it away from my broadcast, but I'll try to do something fun for you guys um, so that you get something to watch. It just won't be live. Okay. That's the 4th of December. All right. Okay, cool. Anyway, Patreon, we do a zoom call. We're going to do a zoom call this Monday night where we all talk to each other. I do it once a week and uh, it's going to be nice. I also should tell you that uh, Friday, I also won't be broadcasting, and I'm going to try to put something up for you this week. Friday is the day that I uh, lay my dad to rest at the um, cemetery, so I'm not available. And this week is this coming week is going to be oh, for me. You know how you kind of once you've lost a parent, you know a mom or a dad, or someone super close to you, you're maintaining pretty well, but then that week is going to be something. So uh, I love you. Send me good wishes and prayers. And I will see you. Um, I will see you a week from Monday and a week from Friday. This week is going to be just one of those weeks that I hold on to the tail of the comment. The comet. Comet year. It's been a comet year where it's been a challenge. So I just hold on and get to the end of December and uh, say to myself, 2024 will be uh, more uh, 2024 will be better. Hopefully, hopefully. So, uh, so I, I appreciate your patience, but come here. I still visit with the tribe as much as I can. We talk, we have a private Facebook page. It's a lot of fun, a lot of cool things happening. Um, so if you, if it looks good to you, when you go and you take a peek, there are higher tiers, but $5 is all you really need for a lot of it. And then if you want to do more, uh, I will be doing more. We thought this was the year we're going to give you more content, but oh, <laughs> it wasn't to be. So hang in there. Um, but I do want to invite you because it is very, very special. So there we go. So let's see what you guys are up to today. Michael Moore is first to pop in. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas Disney. Yes, if you haven't seen this, it's very special, sweet, and charming. I think my first time was a couple years ago. I might have seen it when I was a kid, but I have this ability to um, forget a TV show or a movie if I haven't seen it in a long time. And that's what makes it super, super special. Okay, you may hear my phone ding. It's just to keep up because I'll tell you right now, I am I went and saw my mother and I just keep apologizing that she has to wait till Monday when her mouth hurts. You know, mouth pain is the worst. And I just keep saying, Mom, I really wanted to get them to come in earlier, but uh, there was a hitch in the get along. And so Monday's the earliest, but at least the dentist was kind enough to give me Monday because she was going to give me Friday when I'm not even available. So celebrate those little victories, guys. Celebrate those little victories. And thank you for joining us, Michael. Hello, David Lewis. I love your hair. It's getting so long. I know today is just my hairdresser decided to do something fun. You know, did you also notice there's some gray in here? I put the gray to the front. I love the gray. I love it. I'm finally, finally getting a little salt in that, Peppa. You know, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, I got to go into your Zoom meeting. I'm happy. I've got to go into Zoom meeting. I'm a happy tribe guy just with bad timing. Oh, David, it's going to be this Monday, David. Monday night where the tribe will get together at 630. They just voted on it this morning. So, um, well, like I said, you want to do Monday because the rest of the week looks crazy. And uh, they said, yeah, so it's going to be Monday night. I'll post it and I'll try and post it early. I've been terrible. If you guys have looked at when I posted this today, it was that skin of my teeth moment because I went to the party and we didn't get home till very late. And so we just crashed, including our dog. But uh, this morning I got up and went, oh, I've got to get this posted so I could talk to you today. So through the skin of my teeth, I did it. But uh, yeah, so so David, I totally feel what you're saying. And I hope you can join us uh, Monday, December 4th. And that's a tribe Zoom meeting. Yep. 
Uh, you see Muppet guys. Oh, yeah, off and on. Yeah, yeah, we keep in touch. You know that a lot of the Muppet guys, Michael, um, um, have podcasts. So I try to follow those as much as I can. Yeah, I have been very busy, though, so uh, with with family stuff. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Henry, Henry, hello. How are you, my friend? So rare I catch your live streams. How are you doing? Love to hear your thoughts on Muppets Mayhem and the cancellation. Well, here's the deal, guys. Check to see if Muppet Mayhem is going to have a DVD. All right, because one of the things that I really am not a fan of with streaming is that they decide when you get to see stuff and when you don't, you know? So let's say that Disney decides to at some point take down a Disney film that you love and you're really happy that you can go into Disney Plus and stream it whenever you want or the Muppets or whatever. Um, look for a DVD of it so you can be the master of all you survey. That's what we do here. We collect DVDs, and Black Friday was super cool for DVDs and Blu-rays. They were like $7 and $10 during Black Friday. So we grabbed a bunch because we're working on a library of our own so that if the streaming companies, the people who are streaming, decide to take it off and don't let us see it, we can still see it. You know? So, and it's really a good idea. Get yourself a good DVD player and start building that library. Many years ago, got rid of it because they were told that the DVD was going the way of the A track or the cassette tape. Not true. I mean, it might at some point, but right now streaming is very costly because people have put their content behind their walls, haven't they? It's become harder for places that cable companies like DirecTV or Dish or or, or what is Spectrum or whatever, to give you everything. And so now it's challenging. So your, your Max or your Disney Plus or your Warner Brothers or your Universal or your Paramount or your, they're all behind walls. And before you know it, you're spending $200 a month because you're trying to get all that content that you had before. Way to fix it is DVDs and your player. Indeed, indeed. It's super great. In fact, I just got All About Eve. I was so excited to get it. And I found one super rare. I haven't been able to find it. Finally found it. Found it brand new and can't wait to get it. This is, it's either this week or next week I get it. And it's called Curdled. And I will show you the DVD and I will explain it at the time. But uh, it's a twisted film, super twisted. If you've ever seen that sunshine cleaning service, that's the watered down version of this one. Unbelievable, super cool. Been wanting it for a long time. Finally grabbed it. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. You have movies that you're, you really want. Like we love the Pink Panther. And my favorite is Return of the Pink Panther and Shot in the Dark. Only Peter Sellers. And my husband likes the last one, Pink Panther Strikes Again. And so we are now building that library, that Peter Sellers library, because we have realized, well, we knew it, that we love uh, Pink Panther, Peter Sellers, Peter Sellers, Pink Panther. We just can't get enough of it. So we are building that library as grabbing the blob, uh, Steve McQueen's blob. What else did we grab that was super cool? To me? Oh, the, 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 Golden Voyage of Sinbad, the one where the masthead, Ray Harryhausen, where the masthead comes to life. Oh, not the best movie. Great Harryhausen. So if you like stop motion and you like Harryhausen stop motion, I love that one. I've always loved that one. And it's got Tom Baker as the sorcerer. And uh, that and he's very, very good. So uh, many people say, who was your favorite doctor in Doctor Who? It would be Tom Baker, which was a long time ago, guys. So uh, I know there's a new Doctor Who out there and you guys are really excited. Many of you are, many of you are not. Uh, doesn't matter. Have your debate with, with respect to each other. Don't insult each other. Just talk about the issue. And uh, uh, just my advice. 
You can get more on the tribe. Uh, <laughs> I'm full of advice and uh, little quips and quotes, you know, uh, like poison isn't effective unless you take it. So don't take it. Okay. Um, it's, it's just, it's just wonderful. So, uh, Henry, it's great to see you. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing well. I lost my father, so I will be, uh, taking care of him at the cemetery this, a week from today. Um, I don't know what it'll be like next week, but, uh, I have to tell you that I did, uh, a, a stem as opposed to a steam, Henry. And, uh, I talked with some groups they wanted to run their projects by me and uh, I evaluated them. And then I talked to them about what I thought and gave them some suggestions if they wanted suggestions. Young, young people are so fun, aren't they, Henry? Anyway, it was my honor and a privilege for me to do it. So it's great to see you, Henry. Thank you. Thank you for popping in. How was your Thanksgiving? Mm -mm. <laughs> The good news is, let me tell you what the fun part of Thanksgiving was. Realizing that it's not Thanksgiving unless I get a Costco pumpkin pie. Seriously. You can do so many things with Thanksgiving. And I realized that the thing that makes me twitchy is I don't get Costco pumpkin pie. So we, it's <laughs> so funny. Because what they made was delicious and amazing. But it wasn't pumpkin pie. And it wasn't a Costco pumpkin pie. It's just there's those traditions. We talked about these traditions that seem to live in your head as a kid. And you're just like, you know, Bill, you're just like, okay. Like for me, there's no cranberry sauce. Like the kind that comes molded to the can. And uh, my friend Doug, who was at the party yesterday, says he just opens the can and takes a spoon and scoops it out. But I can't do that. I have to actually put it on a plate, jiggle it. And watch it go, fuck, and then on the plate, right? And the reason I like it is because it's molded to the can. It has the little ripples. It has every, it's just, I don't know why as a kid, I thought that was so cool. That was just so cool to me. And uh, probably why I like mold making. But <laughs> I dig grace. And then I've got to turn it on its side on the same plate and then slice it into coins that are about this big, right? And then I lay the coin on, we laid it as kids, and then we cut little pie shapes out of it all the way around it and ate it like that. Oh. So to tell you that I love Thanksgiving because I finally found that, it was very difficult for me to find in my area, but we, but we found it. And also the pumpkin pie. Turkey, you want to do something different? Okay. Um, things like that. But I'm married to those two items. I'm absolutely married to Costco pumpkin pie, and um, and that that wonderful, lovely, gelatinous <laughs> cranberry sauce. I eat all kinds of cranberry sauce. Don't get me wrong, but the one that makes me float up on the air and go ah, is that one. That one. <laughs> So my Thanksgiving was good, Bill, because I got that one <laughs> and my Costco pumpkin pie with, we all said it at the party last night. The one thing that was heard in all of the cacophony of sounds was it has to be ready whip in the red can. Okay. We were like, we can't have any other whipped cream either. It's got to be the ready whip can, you know, uh, <laughs> You you know, you try to say, I'm not someone of tradition. And then you just go, yeah, I am. Yes, I am. Own it. Uh, I am one of traditions. So my Thanksgiving was actually quite lovely because uh, even though we didn't have pumpkin pie at the gathering that we were at, we had it at home along with the, with the cranberry sauce that I love. We would have brought it, but they told us not to bring anything. And we were fine with that. You know, very nice. You know, don't, don't make us bring something if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, but the first, the first thing we did when we came home was crack into that pie. I said, I, I can't, you know, Thursday's not over till I have that pie with that whipped cream on it. So yeah. And then Friday I had my, my cranberry sauce. So it was lovely. It was just lovely. Thank you. How about yours, Bill? How was everybody's Thanksgiving? Was it fun? Uh, forgive me. Cause today I was a little bit late 
because for some reason my throat went dry and um, I had a sneezing fit on camera. Yeah, thank you. Good thing my tribe is my family. <laughs> I told them to fast forward through that if they were if they were watching it later because uh, yeah. And forgive me, everyone. Again, I told you this year is kind of a hold on the tail of the comet and just write it and get to the end of December year for me. But if you've never joined us before, welcome. Terry Harden here. And if you're watching it later, please feel free to comment, uh, chat with me, uh, ask me a question if you want to. It's all good, man. I wanted to say that next week I won't be broadcasting live but I'm happy to, uh, I'm going to try and, we're going to try and post some content up for you so you're not neglected. We really want to take care of you and uh, we'll see if we can do that. It is going to be a very challenging week for me as I bury my dad. So uh, it's just going to, you know, you know, you know, yeah. So uh, I will see you uh, Monday and let me give you a date and I will when I post and when I talk about it in pre-record, uh, I will tell you the date. So you don't have to work too hard because it is the holiday season. And many of you are holding on comments of your own, aren't you? Just holding on for dear life. I feel you. Believe me. So it will be the 11th. All right. So I will return on the 11th to chat with you all. Unless you're with the tribe, then we do the night, a Zoom call in the evening of the 4th. So think about it. Come join us. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Uh, I missed you too, Angie. I haven't seen you in a while, girlfriend. Have you been all right? Or do you have a comment of your own? Good to see you. Welcome back. Thanks for the hearts. Melissa, missed you on the tribe call, girlfriend. I was talking about how generous you all are. And uh, uh, I, I was talking about how the people make the park. Disneyland, today on the tribe, we were talking about the people make the park. Because one of the things we did during the birthday, which is July 17th, for those of you who don't know Disney, and I know I'm a little Disney-centric today, but I'll shift, Godzilla. Uh, how's that? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, we were talking about the people make the park. So during the birthday last year in July, a lot of people on social media were really complaining that Disney dropped the ball. And they did, but we had a party. OK, we the tribe got together and invited anyone and everyone who wanted to be a part of our party to meet Imagineers, to meet legends, to meet uh, ambassadors, to meet everyone who makes up the tribe. Lots of people and tons of fans. And it is spectacular. It was beyond belief. A great day. So we're going to do it again this July. So mark your calendar, July 17th over in and around the Coke corner and come and join us for some real fun. If you start to go there and go, why isn't Disney, you know, doing a pin, which I don't know why they don't. And why aren't they, you know, why do half the cast members not know that it's the birthday? Be the ambassador. Tell them all about it. This day is the birthday. Don't make them feel bad, but say, gosh, that's kind of strange here. I'll tell you it's the birthday. So, um, so it's fun. It's exciting. It's wonderful. And we had a great time. So that's what I'm saying. And the reason I'm, I'm saying it with Melissa here is because Melissa Eiler is part of the tribe, but more important, Melissa Eiler is a cast member and she really brings joy to you as a guest. And she brings a lot of joy to the tribe. So she's just been so generous as many of the people who work at Disneyland do. And what we've realized is that these people may not get paid what they're worth, and hopefully that is continuing to change, but they understand the perks of being a Disney, a part of Disney, and there's lots of perks. And one of the perks is making it a joyful, magical experience for every guest who walks through that gate. And while we're on the subject, I did read an article about some of you Disneyites out there going a little bit crazy at Walt Disney World and taking the opportunities away from children to have a magical moment. Now, I know that's not all of you, and I'll bet you that's not any of you on this channel. But guys, be sure to lead with love and tolerance, okay? Because you want that little child to have that same experience you did when you were a little kid and you first experienced Disney. So if it's between you and a child getting a hug from Tigger 
or meeting their favorite princess, step back. Let that child go in. I will guarantee you watching those casts uh, interact with children will make you cry and you will celebrate it too. But you will not have taken this opportunity away from young people. Disneyland and the cast members, and I know Melissa will agree, is all about the young and the young at heart. So I know you love Disney and you need it, but try not to go a little blah, 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 and step in front of a child and steal a hug. Uh, in this case, I guess the fairy godmother was going to uh, reached out to a child and the woman slapped the child's hand away and gave a hug to the fairy godmother. You know, um, don't do that. Children take precedence, don't they? Yeah. And it's wonderful. I'm telling you, watching a little child realize what a joyful thing Disney can be. You just can't buy it. Okay. Even if you don't like Disneyland, you say to yourself, I'm not a fan of the park. And you somehow find yourself in the middle of the park. Just watch the way little children see it through their eyes. It's just magical. Magical. I remember the birthday and we saw a little boy with an autograph book. I think he was nine. And uh, I walked over to him at Coke Corner and I said, uh, would you like to meet a Disney legend? And he didn't even know what that was. But those are the people who are instrumental in making Disney the brand that we all know and love. Now, we're not having a lot of fun now. Truth be told, Disney's doing a few things that we just can't understand. But we continue to be the ambassadors to keep it positive as fans and friends and as Imagineers. So, <laughs> so he had this book and I walked up to him and I said, there's a Disney legend over there who animated the spaghetti sequence between Lady and the Tramp and Lady and the Tramp. He's a marvelous guy. He's so sweet. He's so kind. Would you like to meet him? And he said, yes. I said, do you like Lady and the Tramp? Yes. I said, took him over there. And this was the amazing Willie Ito. And Willie drew a picture in his book. And just to watch the little boy first meet Willie. Hi, how you doing? Willie's, you know, 80. So he's in his 80s. And, uh, or maybe he's, maybe he's in his not. I mean, he's so young at heart. Who knows? You know, he looks young as can be. Anyway, uh, it, it, this little boy looked at the book. And then to see Willie draw, it was like, Because Willie drew a picture in there and then he signed it and then he gave it to him and then he took a picture with this nine-year-old boy. You know, how long did that take? Five minutes? Guys, trust me. Not only did the person who was the little boy have a good time, we all around just about cried when we saw his little face. So please don't do that. Please don't do that. Trust your instincts and step back you'll have another opportunity to hug the hug your favorite character. But if you see a child, it's, it's never going to be the same for you. It's going to be 10 times better. So please don't do that. Okay. All right. Be your wonderful Disney child self, but understand that cast members, you know, they love you and love having you there and love that Disney spirit, but they're there for the kids because they want the kids to have that magical experience. They want you all to have that magical experience. Nobody wants you to have a bad day at Disneyland. I don't think if they do, what's that, uh, what's that about? Right. Mike says you get Dave goals live. Occasionally I've gotten Dave, Dave goals live a lot. I worked with him for years. We've worked with each other for when, when was dinosaurs? 1990s, eighties. Yeah. Side by side for years. Yeah. Yeah. Can call him up. Hi Dave. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I see Dave goals a lot. Yes. Yes. Are you a fan of his? Is he your favorite? His Gonzo is incredible. So I, I'm not surprised. His Buns and Honeydew is brilliant. So, uh, of course, he could be your favorite. Henry, good idea. I got rid of my DVD player years ago, but still have a large collection. Should look for one. And they're like, let me tell you something, Henry. They're not expensive. They are so inexpensive. I've got one that's portable. I paid, what, 50 bucks? 
brand new. And I just, yeah, it, 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 it is, it's got a handle on top of it and you can carry it, you know, like, like this, I can take it anywhere, pop in my DVDs and play it wherever I am. I love it. Love it. So, uh, and look for those Black Friday deals, you know, because you can get, and the behind the scenes in many cases are so delicious. So delicious. There's a series I love called Ip Man. It's about the person that Bruce Lee worked with. It's a series of four. They really are fantastic, but the behind the scenes are even more fun. Yeah, so cool. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, if you liked... If you like Breaking Bad, that series that was on AMC, and you remember, um, you remember his lawyer, and then his lawyer got his own series. You remember that Saul Goodman, and there was an own series you could watch. Well, he has one called Nobody. He has a a, a a movie he did called Nobody. Okay, first of all, you got to check it out. It's brilliant. But then you got to buy the DVD and look at behind the scenes because the behind the scenes are even more fun than the movie. So it's called Nobody. It has him. It, it has a close up of his face. And he's <laughs> like this. That actor is amazing, isn't he? Anyway, it's a great movie. Uh, watch it first in case it's not to your taste for what I think you're really going to dig it. And then... You got to watch the behind the scenes because he does all the work and it's a, a, an exhausting, you know, it's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, battles, not battles like, but like, I think you like it. I love it. I love it. Had to have it. Had to have it. I love kick butt movies. I really do. And I think you really like that movie, especially if you like him, Odin, Odenkirk. And uh, his character, it's not Saul in Nobody. He's playing a different role, but it's a great role. And it's one you got to have in your collection, Henry. I mean, it is a must have. So not to mention half the black and whites out there, like uh, like um, them and Crawling Eye, which was the first science fiction movie I ever, I mean, the first scary movie, monster movie I ever saw about eyes on the top of a mountain. It's very cool. But it's 1950s. I mean, give it a break. And uh, 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 Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Kevin McCarthy. Um, and then there's non, but I, see, I am a, a, a 1950s horror movie, scary sci-fi fan. But I'm also a fan of movies that are just so incredible. And they did not have CG. They were all practical, meaning that everything had to be built and, and in cameras in some cases, and optically that you just go, how is this possible? I mean, the, the, the scene in Mary Poppins where Dick Van Dyke is dancing with the penguins. You think that just happened? You know, you guys got to look at this stuff and realize that in the world of CG, you can do just about anything now. But back then they had to figure it out. And it's fun to look around like seams and cracks and go, how did they do that? Seriously, it's fun. So, Henry, I'm so happy you're building your collection. Makes me proud. Makes me proud. CD is how I can watch Song of the South. Bingo, Linda. You said it. Bingo, bingo, bingo. If you have this DVD, you know that, that they are not streaming it for whatever their reason is, which I think is kind of silly. So, uh, it's it, the reasons don't. Mm -mm. You got to remember your time periods, guys. Things happened early that were completely acceptable. Was it right? No, it wasn't right. It was still acceptable in that time period. And you need to watch these movies so that if something in there offends you, you won't duplicate it because you didn't see the meaning of what people are trying to tell you. You understand? Don't take down a Confederate statue because they own slaves. Leave it up and say, don't own slaves. Don't treat people like slaves. Take good care of them. Lead with tolerance and love. Don't stop being a hater. That's what all that says, right? You got to remember that stuff. Otherwise, we're going to repeat it. We don't want to do that, do we? Do we? Do we? I don't think so. Not on this channel anyway. 
Uh, Michael's asking me, did I get that? You, did, Michael, you asked that twice. Yes. I'll just say yes. I'll just say yes. Did you think you didn't post it? You did. Peace and light to you. Yeah, that's my dear. Melissa is not only part of the tribe, she's known as the great mouse detective. Okay. This woman can find anything. She's found, she's found so, she's found some things I had impossible time finding and she found them and I'm absolutely joyful that she did. I was looking for a particular children's book that meant huge to me, meant so much to me because as a child, I read it so much. Let me see if I can find it over here because I think it's back here. Yes, there it is. Okay, so this is it. This is the children's book. And the great mouse detective found it for me. So this is wink and blink and nod. I read this in, this is the book. This is the version. Okay, wink and blink and nod comes in a million versions. But this is the version I had as a little kid. And I read it, read it, read it, read it, read it until the book just fell apart, right? It just fell fell apart. And this book was published in 1964. Copyright 1945. But my parents gave it to me. I fell in love with it. And I read it and read it and read it and read it and read it. Look at the art. Isn't it precious? Don't they look like Cupid dolls? So Melissa Eiler found this for me. And, uh, and, uh, I, I about, I about cried when she found it for me. And the thing I love about it is it says a read aloud book. So I just, I just am so happy. I've been looking, uh, I've been looking for it since I lost my other one and she found it for me. So Melissa, you're a rock star. And we know so many things that Melissa has helped me with. I one time was given a bag from Disney, a lot of times as a Disney Imagineer, I will get some perks like a cool Disney bag. Okay, to to name a few, and it it when they gave it to me and I walked out, it still had that that ink tag on it, but I didn't discover it until I took it out of the bag at my home. Now, when Disney gives you a present, they don't they don't enclose a receipt, so I could not figure out how to pop off that ink thing because you know the ink can damage the merchandise because you're not supposed to be taking it, right? So um, so I asked the tribe and Melissa sent me a video on how to, dis to, to take it apart safely. And as a result, I thanked her by giving her the bag. Yep. So the tribe is very cool, but what's really cool about it is is, is people like Melissa. So, uh, think about it guys. It's a great place. And Melissa, thank you for being the great mouse detective. We love you for being at the park and being the great mouse detective. I'm doing great. You know, the job gets in the way of my social life. Well, I know, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yes, it does. But I'm so glad you got to visit us today. And if you have some time off closer to Christmas, I'm going to be broadcasting. So I hope we see you again soon. My birthday is the day before Disneyland's birthday. My Disney friends always forget. What? Well, we're going to fix that, girlfriend. I'm so glad you told me because uh, we're going to fix that. Okay. You come and see us and, uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll just sweep it together. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll, you know, we celebrate on 17th, but we'll celebrate yours on the 16th. Right now, Willie, I told you about his is the 17th and Robin Cohen, part of our tribe, 17th. So we just celebrate y'all and it's wonderful, but it's seriously the people. All right. If Disney is not touching you in the way, you know, if Disney is doing a few things that are upsetting you, like if you are a star Wars person and you're just getting so sick and tired of some of the star Wars stuff that's coming out, um, or you love Marvel, but they, you feel they're destroying the brand or you're tired of all the live action films that they keep, keep putting out and copying then you got to go with the people and relive the joys of the park, which there are plenty. There are plenty of joys. And that is connecting and learning about uh, what makes it special. 
Why do you like Disney? What is it about Disney? Is it a character? Mine is Tigger. People will send me Tiggers and it just touches my heart. Um, is it the ability to have a pass if you're so fortunate and you don't necessarily go to the park for a day, but you pop in in the afternoon, grab a Dole Whip and sit in the Tiki Room eating your Dole Whip? Oh, so fun. <laughs> A favorite thing for me to do. I absolutely love it. And if I'm in the Anaheim area, I look to see if I can get uh, uh, a reservation and I run in, have a Dole Whip and watch the Tiki, the, the Tiki show in the Tiki room. I love it. The Enchanted Tiki room. It's really special to me. Please, Disney, don't get rid of it because I really love it. I really love it a lot. Yeah, it's super special. I like Disney at Christmas time, but I don't necessarily go a lot. But I love candlelight because all my friends come to town. So candlelight is such a special time because I go to see the people who come to see candlelight because they come from all over the United States and some come from even farther. So it's great to see them because they're all in one place. So I can just walk the park and see all of these people. And it's just lovely. But again, what did I say? It's the people, right? It's the people. So we're going to fix that, Melissa. We're going to make sure your birthday's special. Yes. Yes, Melissa's aces. The tribe uh, The tribe is so much fun and supportive. And Bob is amazing also. Um, he's part of the tribe as well. And you can always recognize him because he has an illustrated hat. Not that he illustrated, but he has, he has for years uh, met a lot of Imagineers, Disney, uh, animators, Disney, um, um, anybody who works for the company, he'll have them sign his hat. And what are you on? Seven, eight or something, Bob? So you can always catch him in that lovely hat. And and every time he gets a new one, he has me sign an and I do an illustration on it. But uh, uh, it, he's fabulous. He's, he's really, really lovely for all of us. Yeah. Uh, there are plenty... There's plenty of Disney to go around. Boom. There really is. There really, really is. Now, if we can get their merchandise to be better, we'd be happy, aren't wouldn't we? <laughs> Something that'll make you separate from your dollars? Like, how about Disney dollars? <laughs> Why in the world, if you had the ability to print money that nobody spends, would you change to a gift card? Just a question. <laughs> I welcome your, your answer to that question because I'll tell you, you can tell me here why you would go to a gift card when people collect your Disney dollars and don't spend them. That's like free money, right? Right? Wish I had that in my stable. I'd love to, to illustrate some dollars that nobody wanted to spend. They wanted to collect instead. I would love that. That would really touch my heart. That would be super special. Yeah, I never understood that. Do you know that actually it it is legal tender? It was. It was, you know, Disney went as far as, as it was legal currency it, within the park. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's what I say. Well, <laughs> Pam, how are you? Some of my most cherished Disneyland memories are magical moments my children had with amazing cast members. There you go. Pam says it like it is. Yeah. Um, People who are cast members today remember a cast member who touched their hearts when they were children. And so they thought, this is what I want to do. So uh, check yourself sometimes, guys. Okay? Just realize, you know, it's it. They, they are so lovely. The cast members are so generous that uh, this park is a really special place. Make it special, too. Okay? Yeah. Uh, unlike the guy who decided to strip naked and walk around small world. That's a bit too special. So don't do that. Um, wow. You're live today. I'm under the weather. To Joe. Oh, well, feel better. Feel better. My friend, were you working hard? Really, really working hard. And then all of a sudden it sort of lifted off your shoulders. And that's sometimes when a creative person or a busy person gets sick. So I wish you a speedy recovery. This is not the month to be sick. This is the month to have fun. And I hope you all have tons of it. Okay, Joe, wish you a quick recovery. 
Yes, that was very magical moment. Willie turned 89. Yeah, he was. It was like, you know, I knew he was working. You know, he's one year younger than my dad. And uh, uh, they talk. Uh, we talked a lot about my father. Um, but that was our present to him for his birthday. He had such a wonderful time, and the way home, he was so happy. So, so Willie. Ito, because he's a legend, is always invited to Club 33 to celebrate his birthday on the birthday. It's like an open invitation. And he usually always goes. But last year, he decided he would rather spend it with uh, Terry's tribe. And he stayed, guys, the whole day. I was, I'm always there at Rope Drop on the birthday. And then I usually stay till about four. But this year, I stayed till about six, seven o'clock. And Willie still stayed beyond my stay at Coke because everybody was having such a good time. And we had one of the tribe members who would come all the way up from, from back East, right. And got COVID. So he was within reach of being near us and he couldn't come see us because he had COVID. So we tried, we worked really hard to video. We recorded parades and we sent him little smiles and sent him little, how are you doings? And we're checking in on you. And he said he had a great time. He was very touched that we took the time to do that for him. Well, of course we did. We're the tribe. We're Disney. We're about making you feel good. So we were really, really uh, happy that he felt like he was part of it, even though he couldn't actually sit with us, you know? So uh, put that on your calendar, guys, because we're going to do it again because we want to. Right? Right. So, Bob, you were right. Absolutely. So much fun. And Willie made it that much more special. Indeed, he did. My birthday is soon. It's the 7th of December. And tell Dave you're a Muppet fan. Okay, I will. I will. I will let him know that you're a Muppet fan. Okay, and congratulations on your birthday. Happy birthday, December 7th. Isn't that, um, that's a significant day in history, isn't it? Uh, forgive me, I've had a year. But uh, that's a very significant day in history. So um, congratulations, good for you. It's also when the original Star Trek movie opened, that first one. Um, that very first Star Trek movie opened on the 7th of December. Yeah, I mean, it's trivia. Wow, I would know that. I'll tell you how I know that. Because I help, I I uh, uh, had two friends that worked on it. I had lots of friends who worked on it actually, but uh, that's how I learned about it. I didn't know a little late, but happy birthday, kiddo! Happy birthday, and we we'll wish you happy birthday on the seventh. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Michael! From the person who is a Muppeteer, and the person who played a lot of um, characters, I was Baby's Arms in Dinosaurs working with Kevin Clash, the great Kevin Clash for five years. And then uh, I also did Muppet mini classics, worked with Jim Henson on a couple of projects, including Muppet 3D theater. So yeah, I've been a Muppeteer for a long time. Yeah. So Michael, happy birthday from this Muppeteer. There you go. Not Dave, but I did a lot of fun things there. Yes, I did. I had a great time. Wow. Good job, Bob. Uh, I was happy when I found that. So happy when I found that. Yes. Yes, you were. And I was just like, remember, I was like trying to hold back tears, Melissa. I was like, oh my God, you did it. Yeah. 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 This, this is, I have it up and I think of you all the time, you know, and if I'm really feeling, you know, then I just open it up and go, oh my God, when I was a kid. And this book is in mint flipping condition. I mean, it's mint. 1960. 64, did I say? Mint condition. Yeah, yeah. So joyful. So joyful. Yeah. You're a rock star, Melissa. You really are. Oh, and you love that bag. Yes. In fact, was it, what year was it? Was it last year or the year before that you came and met my, I think it was the year before you came and saw Lindsay and we gave, and you had the bag with you and we were all at that little bar at the, at the grand and we had such a good time together. Yeah. Oh, just so cool. A couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was just fun. It's the people, guys. It's the people. It's all about the people. Yep. Uh, Pam says, I ruined one of my kitchen forks trying to remove one of those stinking ink tags in the, from the store in another state. Left 
on, but I didn't discover it till I got back home. Well, Pam, let me pay this forward for you in case that ever happens to you again. Thank you, Melissa Eiler. You get a powerful, powerful magnet and you put it on the side. I think it's the side that says, you know, do not remove this. And it actually makes the thing disassemble itself. And uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. No ink, nothing, no fork damage. It just goes, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that here, but it's a, it's on a YouTube channel. You just, there's a guy on YouTube that shows you how to do it. So, um, you know, you won't be able to do that in a store. Um, you're going to be in trouble, but, uh, but if it happens to you, because it, it really is, it really makes you have some agony when you don't get to have it, especially if you don't have a tag or a receipt in a way to say, Hey, I paid for this, you know, um, you can go up and say, I'm an Imagineer and they'll be like, sure you are, you know? So you just, yeah. Anyway, I haven't told you exactly the right way to do it, but look it up and it involves magnets. And thank God saved me. And I was happy to give Melissa that bag. It was my honor and a privilege. I loved it. Melissa Eiler, July 16th. Happy belated, Melissa. Sorry, it's too late. <laughs> a very merry birthday to you, to you. A very merry birthday to you, Melissa, to you. That's what you do, Diane. <laughs> Angie, darling, I agree on Disney dollars. I love mine. I have several from one to 10. I rest my case. Yeah, during the 50th, they had an artist illustrate a $50 bill. Yeah, and uh, nobody spent it. He was there autographing them. And after that, they really didn't spend it. And I think they only had a limited edition of what? 50, I think, maybe a hundred, maybe 500, but just do the math. Nobody cashed theirs. Nope. I don't know why Disney doesn't do that. There's a tons of ways they could finance things. They just brought the Disney dollars back. I'm happy to illustrate a couple. Still wanting to do that anyway. Yep. I still want to do that anyway. Uh, oh, Joe. <laughs> That's right, Joe. December 7th, the first day of the 2023 National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas. We all have our joys, don't we? Yes. And my mother loved this show. And we had another dear friend who loved this show who has passed away. But uh, every time someone talks about that, I think of this. So thank you for bringing it to my attention, Joe. Um, what a great show. If you can go, uh, we tried the magazines, but none of them were, were strong enough. Yep. Yep. Got to get some strong ones. Trust me works. Just ask Melissa who owns that bag. Uh, the lock pin, the lock pin lawyer is the YouTube channel. There you go. So guys lock pin lawyer. That's who she sent me. I was able to get it off my bag from the lock pin lawyer on YouTube and give her the bag. Yes, it was a beautiful bag. Yeah, it was really pretty. But I didn't, I mean, I couldn't use it. So when she made it uh, eligible for me to use and part of our tribe, I said, I'm sending it to you. And I did because I thought it was great. On that note, guys, what is your December like? Sugar cookies, decorating cookies, presents, wrapping gifts, spending time with friends, having a nice dinner, whatever it is. It starts now, December 1st. Do yourself a favor and do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. If there's anything that uh, I can uh, help you with and things, feel free to post it in the comments. If you have a school you want to visit or something like that, uh, there are a lot of things that uh, I as an Imagineer or simply just bring people, share to my channel, and let me help them out as well. I love you all. I know December is going to be a happy, upbeat month. Remember, I will not see you next week live, but I'll look to see if I can get some content for you. So you're not, you know, like, what can we do? I'm sure I can come up with something. I just have to think of what it's going to be. Okay. Have a lovely, lovely weekend.
Yes, Bob Bertine, I say, let, let's say that. Let's just say that. Uh, a day that will live in infamy. Let's say that. Guys, if you're going to candlelight, uh, have a good time and uh, really enjoy yourselves. Be happy, be well. And if you're hanging on the tail of the comet, there's not much longer you have to hold tight before the new year will click over. And I will say it's going to be a lot more productive and better. Okay? All right. Hugs and kisses. We'll talk to you soon. Love you all. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.